This program will introduce you to the features and basic assembly of the new Revolution X powertrain. From the four valve heads and liquid-cooled cylinders, to the single gear-driven counterbalancer and primary drive, the Revolution X shows that its DNA comes from the original Revolution powertrain introduced in the V-Rod family. Both the 500 and the 750 versions share an over-square bore and stroke ratio delivering both strong V-twin low-end torque and an 8,000 RPM redline. In this program, we will present the design features of many components and systems, as well as detail some assembly procedures. The program does not replace the service manual and is not all-inclusive. Always use the latest service information for specifications and complete service procedures. The first assembly in our engine build is the crankshaft and connecting rods. Both the 500 and the 750 use a forged crankshaft that has a 66 mm or 2.5 inch stroke. The crankshafts are not identical as they are balanced for different piston weights. The connecting rods are the same in both engines and use insert style bearings. The connecting rods use a cracked cap design that produces a superior alignment between the two parts. The parts also have a cast nub that is used for alignment and identification. The connecting rods do not have a specific assembly direction on the crankshaft, but their location should be identified during removal so they can be replaced in the same location and direction. The connecting rods have a letter stamped on them to indicate their bore size. It can be an A or B. The crankshaft will also have a letter stamped on the side to indicate the journal size. It can be an A or B. A chart is provided in the service manual to match the codes and indicate a specific bearing that will produce the correct running clearance. The crankcases have a size stamp as shown here on each side of the case to indicate the bore diameter. This code is used to select correct bearing insert size. The code on the crankshaft is not used for main bearing selection. We begin the assembly of the engine by installing the correct sizes of connecting rod bearings into the rods and then installing them onto the crankshaft using new bolts. The crankcases of the Revolution X engine are split vertically through the centers of the cylinder bores, similar to the Sportster powertrains. The main bearings are pressed into the crankcase using the special bearing installation tool so that the seams between the inserts are oriented horizontally, as shown here. Just like the Sportster engine, the right case half is installed into the engine stand to begin the assembly process. Our case has the bearings, piston oil jet, and other oil passage restrictors installed. The oil pickup screen is inspected and installed in the case pocket. The cover is installed with thread locker used on the screws. To install the crankshaft, the bearing and journal are lubricated and then using the guide tool the crank is inserted into the case. The right side rod is for the rear cylinder and the left is for the front. The next component group installed will be the transmission. The Revolution X uses a six-speed constant mesh transmission. The power flow is from the gear on the input shaft to the matching gear on the output shaft. The transmission uses fixed, sliding, and freewheeling gears. The freewheeling gears will use either a solid bushing or a roller element bearing. Oil is pressure fed to the shafts, and oil holes are found under each gear on the shaft. Individual gears will not be sold for service at this time. To install the transmission, the case is rotated upright and plastic pipe is used to protect the rods and case surfaces as assembly continues. The transmission shafts are held together as a set and installed into the right case. Check the position of the washer on the output shaft during installation. With the gear set in place, the shift forks are installed next with the pins facing toward the shift drum. A letter is cast into each shift fork to indicate its position in the engine. Install the shift drum and engage the shift pin in the corresponding groove in the drum. Lift and rotate the drum or gears as needed. 
With the installation of the shift fork shafts, the crankcase is ready to be completed. Prepare the cases by applying a thin line of crankcase sealant as indicated in the service manual graphic. Install the transmission washer and the protective collar over the crankshaft end. Oil the bearings and shaft journals and install the case half. Tighten the crankcase bolts using the sequence in the service manual to ensure correct alignment. After installing the output sprocket, assembly continues with the installation of the balancer shaft. Moving over to the primary side of the engine, we have installed the shift drum end pins and detent arm. Sliding the shift shaft in and aligning the center spring and ratchet arm completes transmission assembly. The next area we will focus on is the oil pump. The Revolution X engine uses a high pressure lubrication system. Normal oil pressure is between 30 and 80 PSI. Oil is drawn from the common sump at the bottom of the engine into a G-rotor oil pump. A pressure control valve is built into the pump cover. From the pump, the oil is sent to the oil filter and then back to the main crankcase bearings. Passages from the bearings deliver oil to the piston oil jets and back to each of the transmission shafts. Restrictors are pressed into these passages to manage oil flow. Oil for the top end and rod bearings is also drawn from the main bearings. In the cylinder heads, the oil is delivered to the bearing surfaces for the camshaft and through the rocker arm shaft out to the valve stems. The oil from all areas drains down to the sump past the cam chains. Assembly continues by installing the outer oil pump rotor into the case. The T mark on the rotor will face in. Next, the inner rotor is assembled onto the drive shaft using a roll pin. The T mark on the rotor will face the long end of the shaft. Install the shaft and rotor into the case and secure the oil pump cover with the bolts. Now the oil pump drive gear is attached using the roll pin and a new retaining ring. Before continuing on with the assembly of the primary case, the pistons and cylinders will be installed. The 750 engine uses an 85 mm bore, while the 500 uses a 69 mm bore. The pistons are sold as a matched set with the cylinder liner and are not available in oversizes. The cylinders have a cast-in F or R code to indicate location. The cylinder liners are a light press fit into the outer casting, and two O-rings are used as internal seals for the water jacket. A special tool is used to remove and install the liner. With the pistons installed on the connecting rods, rest the piston on a support plate. The cylinder has a substantial bevel, so you will not need to use a ring compressor during installation. Just lubricate the piston skirts and install. When installing the base gasket, visually check that the gasket aligns with the oil passage on the crankcase, as shown here. With the cylinders in place, the fixed cam chain guides are installed. The next assembly installed is the cylinder head. Both models feature a four-valve design with a single camshaft. The valve sizes of the 750 are larger than those on the 500 model. Both use a compact Pentaroof style combustion chamber for efficient combustion. 87 pump octane fuel or higher is recommended. The Revolution X engines use valves with 4.8 mm stem diameters to reduce weight. This allows the use of single coil springs even at a higher RPM. Rocker arms are used to transfer the motion from the cam lobes to the valves on the Revolution X engine. 
rollers are used to reduce friction at this contact point. Where the rocker arm adjuster contacts the valve, a flexible socket compensates for the difference in angles of the contact point during movement. We will continue the assembly by rotating the engine until the rear cylinder is at top dead center. The crankshaft gear is temporarily installed to aid in rotation. Remove the gear and check that the timing mark on the crankshaft end aligns with the center line of the rear cylinder, as shown here. The laminated head gasket has an assembly direction stamp on it, for reference during assembly. If installed upside down, the oil passage to the camshaft will be blocked. Observing the cylinder head markings, install and then tighten the six head bolts using the sequence and torque shown in the service manual. The assembly continues with the installation of the camshafts. The camshafts are identified by the casting marks F for the front and R for the rear. The lobes must face up for clearance during assembly. When the camshaft is seated, the camshaft is rotated so that the pin on the sprocket end faces up. The rocker arms have different shapes, but no identifying marks are used. Select the rocker arm that matches the valve and lobe locations and lubricate the component surfaces during assembly. Install the rocker arm shafts with the threaded opening facing out and then install the camshaft retainer plate. The cam chains and sprockets are installed next. There are two sets of marked links on the cam chain. The first is a single marked side plate. The second marking is two adjacent side plates. On the crankshaft sprocket there are two dots. A marked side plate is centered over each dot when the chain is in the correct position, as shown here. Align the single marked link on the chain with the arrow on the cam sprocket and install the sprocket onto the camshaft. The cam chain tensioner is now installed and the lower mounting bolt is tightened. To prepare the tensioner for assembly, push the lock plate on the adjuster and then push the rod into the tensioner body. The body can then be bolted to the cylinder. Install the spring, washer, and cap onto the tensioner and tighten. The unit will self-adjust. Lock the camshaft's position using the special tool and then tighten the sprocket bolt to specifications. Install the crankshaft sprocket with the dot on the gear aligned with the dot on the crankshaft. Install the washer and bolt and then hand tighten. Next. Rotate the crankshaft 420 degrees toward the front cylinder. If you start with the wrench handle aligned with the rear cylinder, it will be aligned with the front cylinder's bore after the rotation as shown here. At this point, the dot on the outer rim of the crankshaft gear will be pointing toward the balance shaft as shown here. Install the special sprocket locking tool to hold the crankshaft and remove the bolt and gear. We have continued with the assembly of the front cylinder head components and are now ready to install and time the front cylinder cam chain. Align the marked links on the chain to the sprockets using the same procedure as the rear cylinder. With the front chain and tensioner installed, the crankshaft gear can be timed to the crankshaft and tightened to specification. To tighten the front cam sprocket bolt, the crankshaft may need to be rotated until the locking tool aligns with the notches on the camshaft. The balancer drive gear is installed next. The gear uses a spring-loaded offset subgear to eliminate gear lash. To install the gear, it must be locked into an assembly position. Using the special tool, rotate the subgear and install the locking rod to hold both gears in position. To install the gear, first rotate the crankshaft until the dot on the gear faces the balancer shaft. Assemble the gear so that the crankshaft dot is between the two dots on the balancer gear. With the gears timed, the locking rod can be removed to release the spring preload. Use the crankshaft locking tool to hold the crankshaft and tighten the balancer nut to specifications. 
The next assembly we will install is the clutch. Both models use a multi-plate wet clutch that is gear driven from the crankshaft. The clutch also drives the oil pump through this gear on the back of the clutch basket. The clutch uses damping springs between the gear and the basket to smooth out power pulses. The clutch also has a damping spring and special narrow friction plate for smooth engagement. The clutch is cable operated. The cable rotates the shaft in the cover which causes the release pin to move against the clutch bearing. Assembly begins by installing this large thrust washer with the beveled side facing the engine. As the clutch is installed, you will need to rotate the oil pump gear and rock the clutch to engage the crankshaft gear. To keep the clutch and input shaft from rotating when tightening the nut, this special tool is used to lock the components. The washer behind the nut is installed with the cupped or concave surface facing in. Tighten the nut to specification. Complete the assembly of the clutch by installing the springs and lifter plate. The lifter plate is installed with the bearing races facing out. Moving on to the left side of the engine, the starter motor, reduction gears, and rotor are installed next. The rotor uses a key to align with the crankshaft. Tighten the alternator rotor bolt. Then remove the locking tool from the right side of the crankshaft. The coolant pump can now be installed. Rotate the impeller to align the slot on the shaft with the oil pump drive during assembly. Before installing the primary cover, we will set the valve lash on all of the valves. Position a new gasket and check the function of the clutch actuator, then install the primary cover. This concludes our overview program on the new Revolution X powertrains. All procedures shown are edited examples of the complete service procedures. Always use and follow the service manual procedures when servicing the engine. All components shown are early pre-production parts and are subject to change.